is inscribed with the world's largest star chart. For several years, from the year AD 1078, the Bureau of Astronomy of the Song Dynasty Court systematically carried out observations of the heavens and made extensive records. During the Southern Song Dynasty, astronomers drew up a star chart based on those records and had it inscribed on the large stele. The stone-carved star chart of Suzhou, on which appear no less than 1,431 stars, is the biggest and earliest star chart in the world, and it is so detailed that modern astronomers find it incredible. In the case of the position of 266 fixed stars, discrepancies in accuracy between what is recorded on the stele and measurements made today using modern measuring standards are very small indeed. The on-the-spot approach to conducting research also promoted the design of calendars during the Song Dynasty. In the Tungtian calendar introduced in the Southern Song Dynasty, the discrepancy in the length of the year suffered by earlier calendars was reduced to just 22 seconds. This means it was every bit as accurate as the Gregorian calendar still used throughout the world today, yet the Tungtian calendar was devised 400 years earlier than the Gregorian calendar. Ancient Chinese followed the practical notion that astronomical observation should serve agriculture, and the most direct manifestation of this was seen in the continuous corrections made to calendars throughout the various dynasties. Early in the Northern Song Dynasty, a lunar solar calendar was introduced, but in it there was a discrepancy between the phases of the moon and the terms of the sun, and this often resulted in delays to important farming events. In order to establish the precise relationship between moon phases and solar terms, Shen Kuo proposed the idea of a calendar with 12 solar terms. That这种历法可以说一改过去的传统，过去都是我们叫阴阳合力，就是把二十四节气和月亮的这个数望月合在一起的。啊，他他认为这个东西比较复杂，所以说干脆就把数望月的那套东西给它撇开，啊，自己完
The four great inventions had initially an enormous influence on the development of Chinese civilization and later a far-ranging global impact. All four were invented prior to the Song Dynasty, but it was under Song that their full potential began to be realized. Over the long period of the evolution of Chinese civilization, we can trace the lives of numerous great historical figures. Through their wisdom, intelligence and remarkable achievements, the Chinese nation was able to stand proudly at the pinnacle of the science and technology of the ancient world. Among those geniuses were the Duke of Zhou, who observed the sun's shadows in front of the Ngomon. There was Lu Ban, who made scaling ladders for the state of Chu. There was the profound and brilliant philosopher Mo Zi. There was Li Bing, who constructed the great water conservancy project known as the Dujiang Weirs. And then there was Zhang Hung, who invented the first seismograph and succeeded in locating the epicenters of earthquakes. There were also many skilled craftsmen, such as Bi Sheng, who invented movable type printing. These greats of the ancient world laid the cultural and scientific foundations for the appearance of China's four great inventions during the Song Dynasty. This Chinese science history development is the most important time in the Song Dynasty. Chinese science is the four great 纸比较早的，那么，呃，这个印刷、罗盘，呃，和火药，主要的应用阶段都是开始于宋代。At an intersection of the Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal is the beautiful city of Zhenjiang. In order to commemorate the famous Chinese ancient scientist Shen Kuo, in 1985, the people of Zhenjiang rebuilt Dream Brook Garden. The place where Shen Kuo spent the last few years of his life. It was in this garden that Shen Kuo completed his famous work, Dream Pool Essays. According to Dr. Joseph Needham, who was well versed in the history of Chinese science and technology. The Encyclopedia Dream Pool Essays is an extremely important landmark in the history of Chinese science and technology. In this work, recorded in great detail, are the scientific thoughts and technological breakthroughs of the Song Dynasty. Dr. Needham enthusiastically praised Shen Kuo as the most outstanding scientist in the history of Chinese science. Shen Kuo was indeed a genius. When he was made a military officer in Yan'an, Shanxi Province, he discovered the region had an abundance of petroleum. After carrying out a few experiments, he found that soot made from the smoke of burned petroleum could be used to make writing ink. He then concluded it would be an excellent substitute for pine soot, and that using the substitute would reduce deforestation. He then ordered that his new writing ink made from the soot of burned petroleum be produced in batches, and he rightly predicted. That petroleum would be used greatly in the future. But as well as that, Shen Kuo was the most direct participant in and chronicler of the four great inventions of ancient China. Originally, gunpowder was used as a kind of medicine to dispel plague and treat ringworm. Earlier in the Tang Dynasty, Taoist alchemists had discovered that when sulphur, saltpeter, and charcoal were heated together, the result was a chemical reaction that caused fire. From then on, this medicine that could be set on fire was known in Chinese as Wu Yao or fire medicine. It was during the Song Dynasty that people discovered how to harness the force generated by the discharge of burning gunpowder, and invent the fire rocket, the predecessor of all modern rockets. According to ancient Chinese legends, the Yellow Emperor invented a device that was known as the South Pointing Chariot, the instrument that gradually evolved into the modern compass. The earliest documentation concerning the compass can be traced back to before the Qin Dynasty, well over 2,000 years ago. During the Han Dynasty that followed, 
The famous philosopher Wang Chung recorded that when a piece of lodestone carved in the shape of a ladle was balanced on a round bronze plate, the handle of the ladle would point to the north entirely by itself. Before the Song Dynasty, this compass known as the South Pointer was not particularly accurate, but while trying to improve the precision of the compass, Shen Kuo made a great discovery regarding the globe's magnetic declination angle. Although the compass had already been invented before the Song Dynasty, it was not until the time of the Song Dynasty that the earliest magnetic compass could be used for navigation. After the magnetic declination problem had been solved, the compass went on to be highly important for navigation at sea. With Shen Kuo's new improved compass, a large boat in the Song Dynasty could travel much further, and over time, the compass invented by the ancient Chinese was exported and used in ships across the world. Several hundred years later, when the American continent was discovered, it was thanks to the compass. By that time, the compass and invention of the Chinese had written a truly magnificent page in the history of world civilization. The adoption of the compass in navigation, of course, meant that ships were less likely to get lost at sea. Ultimately, it also made it possible for ships to travel further away from China. Well, it wasn't long before other countries were making use of compasses. Thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. And join me again next time when we'll bring you more about the development of Chinese civilization and the Song Dynasty. I'm Ji Xiaojun from CCTV International. Bye for now.